Hello and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here. Going to dive into today's masterclass all about uh, designing mazes and puzzles. And basically, we're going to do a cool design in Illustrator. So, cheers. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm happy to see you. Um, happy Friday. Thank you so much for your patience there, too. Uh, South Bay, um, Muriel, Lorian, Afrosia, Frosty the Beer Man. I see ya. Uh, Sam, what's up? Awesome. So, seems like everything's coming in loud and clear and all that stuff. And we got our coffee and we're ready to rock uh, with Rick H. in the house. So, yeah, let's get this party started. I'm going to switch over and uh, we're going to have some fun today. So, let me just clean up a couple things and switch over. And uh, just so you know, this came from, uh, yeah, I was like, at, you know, I've spent some time on Reddit. And just so you know, I always try to, uh, you know, find what people are looking, to, trying to do on, on Reddit and all the social platforms and answer those questions. And somebody was talking about mazes, and I thought that would be kind of fun to tackle. So, um, yes. So thank you, Stoney. I am feeling... I am feeling better. Still like looking to get my lung capacity back. Lost a little bit of it, but overall, it's just because I'm not able to go like run on a treadmill at 12% for a minute. <laughs> 12 miles per hour, that is. Um, all right, let's get lost in mazes. Um, so this is how I would actually, if you want to make a maze, use this rectangle, your rectangular grid tool. A couple of these like get lost in the shuffle, these tools. So, um, and there are other ways to do it. This is going to be the easiest, I think. Uh, and we're going to make it non-destructive, basically. So we use the rectangular grid tool. Um, let's make sure nothing is on here. Okay, good. And uh, we can click and drag and start to draw out our maze. What's cool about this is as I draw, drag it out, I can hold the shift key to constrain it, and I can hit the up arrow, right, and the right arrow to add rows and columns. So I can start to visually kind of make this as complex as we want to. We won't do anything too complex right now because I want to make sure I get it done within the hour. Um, but we can go with something like that. So that's that's one way to do things, right? Just before we let up on the mouse, add all of those squares. Look at how many we can add. Super easy to do. Look at how complex we can make one, right? So that's cool. Already lost. Let's so say you're kind of trapped if you're in this maze. So what did we do? Well, if we click once, we get the rectangular grid tool options. So in here, we could just dial this in if we want to as well. So we can make this a thousand by a thousand. Uh, grid lines, let's do 20, 20, um, use outside rectangle as a frame. I actually don't want to do that, just so you know. I'll clean that up later. I'll click OK. There we go. So here's our lovely, our lovely grid. Let's move it into place like so. Adjust the thickness and all that fun stuff, right? So we're already, um, we're already kind of like well on our way, which is cool. All right. So since I'm showing that, I'm also going to show if you wanted to make a circular grid, we'll go to the polar grid tool, and you get similar options even as I drag this out. The arrow keys up and then to the right, adding more and more. Um, uh, gosh, I don't know what they, I don't know what they call all of these, but again, we could make this as complex or as easy as we want to. And, uh, look at these just like fun looks we can get, right? So we could actually eliminate all those lines and we already have, like, I'm slowly hypnotizing everybody. Ooh. Right. So again, super cool what we could do with these tools. I don't want you to forget about them. Same thing for the grid tool. Even if you just want a series of lines, super easy just to add a series of lines the same way. So getting rid of all those, if we just want a bunch of columns or rows, this is the easiest way to do it, right? Just like that. And again, just click to type it in like so. 
Um, switching over to my Polar Grid tool, I'll click once and we'll take a look at these settings, which actually are pretty much identical. So, but I'm going to show you what skew looks like. Okay. Uh, yeah, pie. Maybe it's the pie slices, the radial dividers. So those are the pie slices. Yeah, I like pie slices better. Wouldn't it be fun if, I wish the language was maybe like a little bit more playful, but you know what? It's also good to be exact. Uh, let's do, let's do 20 there. Let's do concentric dividers. We're going to push it out by say 20% and we'll, we'll up this to 40, 40. So what this is going to do is it, it's going to have the lines be more dense the further out it goes. So that's what's going to happen there, right? We won't work on the radial dividers. Actually, no, screw it. Let's do the radial dividers as well. Let's skew it to the bottom as well. So we're playing with the skews now, right? And this is what we get. We get actually something kind of ugly. It's because I messed with that bottom one. So let's click again. Let's take this back down to zero. Let's click OK. And then here we have skewing, skewing outward. So hopefully that makes sense. We got all our spokes. Tim's in the house. Tim, buddy, I miss you. I haven't seen you in a bit. And I miss you. Right, so we're just making these grids. Again, this is all in response to something I saw on Reddit where somebody was trying to make a maze and they were really struggling, right? So let's do, let's do this again one more time. I'm gonna click once, I'm gonna get rid of the skew, get this back to where we want it. That is super dense. We'll change this to 20, 20, boom, there we are, right? So here's our couple, couple of our options. Now, how do we turn this into a maze now? Because what does this consist of? Uh, it consists of a bunch of lines. Can you push and warp the lines? Yeah, you should be able to. Let's actually try that. Great idea, by the way, Carol. Ooh, Carol, coming in clutch with a great idea. Um, let's take the warp tool. Um, the problem is <clears throat> these all these um, lines are not connected. I want the line to be connected here and then connected here in order to get a good warp, right? So if I do happen to select the warp tool and push, oh, actually, it still does it pretty good. Oh, never mind. I stand corrected. If you hold down the option key with the warp tool, option, and then drag, you can make your brush size bigger. But yeah, what if, what if the maze was like kind of warpy? How fun would that be? And we could do that. Compliments of Carol, because she's a genius. Right, this is the, the warp maze. Like that. It's still a fun maze, but now we get to start to customize it. So again, how do you get rid of some of these lines? Because if you start to ungroup everything, I mean, I just kind of want to point out that what you get is um, you get uh, these individual lines. So this happens to be an individual line. Ugh. There we go. Ungroup. Right? This is just one solid line. So you can't go in and delete it. What you need to do is you need to start outlining everything. So let's come in here. We'll select all this. Make sure it's grouped again. Uh, I would go in and I'm going to expand everything. So let's expand all of the fills and the strokes. We'll click OK. And there we are. OK. Um, you might think to use the Shape Builder tool because we want to build a path. OK. I think this will be fun. $5, please. <laughs> Carol, I owe you a coffee because you're a genius. So we could use this uh, Shape Builder. So we'll go to the Shape Builder tool. Shape Builder is going to add or remove, um, you know, from that selected shape. So if I add, so I'll click and drag, I could start to build a path that way if we want to, which is totally cool. You could do things that way. Uh, if you hold down the option key, it's going to eliminate or remove like so. The problem with this is this part. This is what I don't like. 
So if I remove, remove, look what happens. Oh, actually, it does, it does do a pretty good job. But ultimately, what it does is it, it, um, it, uh, it eliminates those lines. And what if you want to bring this bar back, like bring this wall back? You can't do it. So rather than adding and removing destructively, what we're going to do is we're going to use our paint bucket tool, live paint bucket, right underneath Shape Builder. So this is what I would do. All right. So we use the live paint bucket. We'll go in. Um, and typically, I just like paint with white, but we can paint with any color. Because look at look at what we get with the live paint bucket. With the live paint bucket, we get these color squares. And if I use my arrow keys, let's move it up. I can toggle through different colors. So you guys know I'm gonna do pink. Why not? Or yellow? You know, some bright colors. But as I start to paint or drag these lines it doesn't actually remove those lines in between. They're still there. So I can come back in and if I want a wall right there, click, my wall is back. Oh, I want to eliminate it, click, and then it's, you know, it's, it's back again, right? So it's removed. So that's how I would do it. Start to jump in and start to build these different paths up over like I'm doing right now. and just try these different. And I just think this gets to be fun because then you just get to build out a maze, huh? Isn't this fun? So yeah, use the uh, live paint bucket tool in association with the grid tool, either radial or standard grid, and start to build out your maze. Let's... And this is another thing. This is why we outlined everything because we actually get all of those points now. So we'll come through, da 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 um, I hope you guys don't mind. I might not do this whole maze, <laughs> uh, but we'll give it the uh, appearance of a maze. Does that work? I used to make mazes as a kid. And you always entered through the volcano. <laughs> I, it was always topographic. There was always a volcano you went in. And you need to probably try to save a princess or something like that. So, anywho. There's our entry point. We can go down. And what's nice about this, since I'm using different colors, I can say, hey, you know what? The areas that are... Um, is not the correct path. So what I would do is I would take this and I would just start drawing and creating the path clear down to the, um, oh, not, not that crazy, clear down like the, the actual answer path, if you will, or the, the, the correct journey is what I would do with this one. I'll just do this real rough. Won't spend a lot of time on it because you guys get the idea at this point. This is the correct path to the exit. It's probably going to be pretty obvious. Especially when you make these long lines, they get to be pretty noticeable, I feel. So you just get to play. We're just playing here. There we go. We'll do that. Made it to the end. There's our main path. And then we can have some fun with these other colors. Say, hey, you know what? This is the wrong route. Whatever. Right through here. But, but. You get the idea. This all makes sense, right? Excuse me as I roughly go through this. And by the way, this has to be the wrong route, so it has to be connected to the yellow somehow. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna, ooh, put a hungry minotaur in the center. Oh, can we make a minotaur, please? Here's another sort of wrong route. We'll have this wrong route go this way. 
pa 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 I kind of have to complete this now, don't I? Maybe this maze will be pretty simple. But I'm going to show you some other things because I think it'll be fun just to use um, a maze as a design element, which will be a lot of fun. Nick Longo's in the house. Nick, we're making mazes, buddy. You know how sometimes you just want to get lost. That's what we're doing here. We're just getting lost. Nothing wrong with that. Here's a wrong route. Here's another wrong route. How do you get there? Maybe you bust through uh, this wall. Like so. All right. Don't mind me. Hurry up, Paul. I'm getting a little bit crazy just because I want to give this appearance of a maze because I want to use a maze as a design element and I want to have some fun with some fonts that I have as well. So this will be really cool. <laughs> is this fun to do? Hopefully this is fun to do or fun to watch. You guys already know the master route, which is the yellow. That's going to that's gonna get you home. All these other ones? Yeah, no. Nah. It's not getting you anywhere. Where you where do you think you're going with all those? Cut through there. Cut through here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, maybe this guy goes over there this way. Oh, no, that's the wrong way. What are you doing? Pop up. No. Why'd you do that? Let's undo that. And hey, how about if we zoom in, huh? How about using our, you know, using our magnifying glass? You want to go this way? Oh, no. Oh, it's the wrong way. Oh, I did it again. I screwed up. Let's go back down. Oh, is this the right way? Maybe? So anyway, how's everybody doing? <clears throat> oh, man, tell me about this. Sam, can we talk about, like, I feel like we need that, like, you know, people don't eat cereal anymore, right? The government's not... It's not like it's a, you know, hot crop to be pushing on children these days. But, um, like, I miss the days of just, like, eating cereal and staring at the back of a cereal box and having that, just reading something dumb about wheat. <laughs> like your buddy, fro your new buddy, Frosted Mini Wheat. You know, but it was, like, kind of fun to, um, you know, just kind of, like, stare at fun graphics and kind of be exposed to something that you're usually not exposed to. I guess. Uh, oh, yeah, we need to cut this one over. So we'll have this one cut over this way, like so. Because you're going to think this is the right way. Maybe you think this is the right way. But anyways, I, I, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is what we want. We want something that's just like you could stare at and uh, things like that. Remember, if we want to bring back any one of these walls, we can do that at any time. Just using my arrow keys coming in. Bam, that wall is back. Oh, we want to get rid of it. Bam, we've gotten rid of it. So you get the idea. Let's actually use a different color just for fun. Let's go into purple. Purple root. This is going to throw them off. Let's throw them off right here. Sneaky wrong way. Shout out to Carol Pearl. She, I owe her a coffee because I think her idea of warping this maze was brilliant and uh, feel foolish for not, uh, not thinking about that sooner. But you are a genius. Let's have this one go this way. Pop. So anywho, you guys get the idea. Let me um, get into some of this other stuff because I don't want this to take all day even though it kind of is, but it's not, we're not doing bad. Look at this. We're actually making some good progress. Um, ooh, Sam. what did Sam say? Yeah, so got that. Cool. Got it. Um, yeah, I think just like making games would be fun. I'm going to show you another resource online as well that you're just going to like, 
uh, you're going to flip your lid when you see this other resource that I'm going to show you. Pretty excited about. Okay, so this one, we'll have this one. Maybe this one will enter. Uh, oh, you could go this way too. So here's another way to get lost. Oh, we want that to be yellow. Done. Uh, we want actually this to be purple because that's also the wrong way. By the way, did you know, as I'm using the live paint bucket tool, if we look in our swatches panel, we'll see this dance around. So we've gone from, so we're at the top, right? So we're flipping through the top of those. I'll hit over. It goes down here, so it goes down to the bottom. So these are the colors I'm using, and the ones right down here. So you could actually just kind of see it highlighted, which is nice. Uh, let's go with green just to mix it up. Is that how you get to it? Is this the way you go? I don't know. So what else you guys got? What else is going on next week is if you're living in the US is Thanksgiving. So that'll be nice. How am I switching colors? My arrow keys. Bop, bop. Uh, green. Oops. Oops. You guys are getting the cheat sheet for this because you know which way, which way is to not go. Done. Did we do it? Oh, let's do right this, this spot right here. Done. We did it. Here's our wacky maze. Pretty easy. What time we got? 23 minutes in. And the World Cup starts. If you're into that sort of thing. Very controversial, because that's in Qatar. Let's not even talk about that. All right. So yeah, arrow keys, whatever. Arrow keys, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, this is this is... This is doing well. I'll take this. Maybe I'll copy it. I'll just put it on a layer on top. So this one could be the answer. And then we'll paste this one on top in the exact same spot. And then what we need to do, since we've been using Live Paint Bucket, we'll expand it. Now we have individual shapes, right? And we can ungroup it. But the big thing we want to do now is we want to turn all of the colors, all of this, these yellow squares, we want to do a select same fill color and then change it to white and so on and so forth. Uh, what I could have done is I could have just selected black. But I still need to, um, it's fine. I could have just selected everything else. Instead, I guess we're doing things the hard way. There we go. There's our maze. Cool. We did it. Um, let's grab... Silhouettes. Do I have a silhouette of someone? Uh, let's try it. Maybe I do not. I just want to grab uh, some sort of person. Let's do person. Maybe we'll just type in person. There we go, here's our character. 
Boom, let's just take him. Paste him. That's where you start. Ooh, that one's fun too. And uh, this is where you end up. There we go. Maybe he's trying to find his way to his love. So this is the Romeo and Juliet that does not end in tra tragedy, but this is the love story, the love story maze. You know, he's just trying to make it to his lady or significant other or whatever. Uh, Minotaur, alien predator beast. Oh no, it's a, there's an alien predator beast at the end. Oh no, we, sorry we went through that maze. Okay, shift gears. Let's save our file. We did a great job. Congratulations. Still clap. I got some cool fonts that I want to show you. So we'll deal with, we're going to deal with uh, mazes as a design element that we can then turn into a maze because I think it'd be fun rather than just be random lines if they actually said something. That would be really cool. Or if they had a 3D look. That's also a great idea. Oh, so many good ideas. We are, we are freaking geniuses. Uh, suck the same fill color. Boom, get rid of all that. The maze is completely empty now. Right, so there's no lines in there. But let's take this. Uh, let's get r these characters, group. Oh. Group. Cut them. Let's just put them on their own layer. There are people. Lock it down. And, um, you know, in terms of stylizing all of this, we, for one, can... Actually, no, everything is actually, they're all filled shapes. They're, they're actually not even all connected. So yeah, we could take them and we'll try Pathfinder to connect everything. Boom, Pathfinder connects it. It's all one shape now, which is awesome. And um, we could do a, fun, a ton of fun things here. So they're already expanded. So it could be expanded, it could be extruded. Carol, I did think about um, potentially like using 3D and materials, so giving it a little bit of an angle or at least giving it a shadow. I think that's going to take maybe a little bit of time processing uh, all that content. Uh, but what I will do is I'll open up my appearance panel. And we can make this a little bit more fun by giving it a stroke around it. So the stroke can be, you know, say pink or whatever. Let's go back and hide that, but that just has like a pink outline. Or we could change the fill altogether. Let's give it a fill of uh, purple. So anyways, just kind of playing around, that's all. Uh, oh. Shall we try it? Shall we try? Let's let's try this. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to save this. I might regret it because this is a very complex shape. But what we are going to do is we are going to try to do a little 3D and materials action. So we're going to do a 3D extrude and bevel. We're just going to give it a little bit of a bevel. Uh... Yeah, Colby. Yes, I thought about doing that too. Yeah. What, okay, Colby, what I was going to do is I was going to take one of these mazes. Once we have it completed like as a square, we could map it on a cube or something like that. And then it is like have, have one side flown to the other side, flown to the other side, flown to the other side, like endless sort of... Um, Varun, good to see you here, buddy. I'm so glad you're here. And uh, uh, I love all the content you post. Um, I've not really been on Instagram that much, but I'm going to keep an eye out. Okay. So here we have this. Let's just offset it a little bit. We could always grab this little free form rotation. I think just like even doing this a touch is going to take forever. We'll see. Heck, let's do uh, isometric. Oh, let's just try off axis front. and nothing happened. I don't know why it's not rendering that. So anyways, 
fine. We won't worry about it. Um, let me get back into my next phase, which I think it would be cool to have some fun fonts and play with them. So I've actually discovered some cool fonts and uh, started typing in some phrases, and I want to show these to you. You can feel free to download these as well, right? So this is what I was working with. Like, what if they said some text? So I just went and searched on um, Adobe Fonts fonts.adobe.com, and I sorted by geometric, like so, or typed in geometric, to find to try to find some fonts that were just all angles and no curves. So like avant-garde, kind of something like that. That looks like a maze. So that's what I was looking for. I went through um, uh, Adobe Fonts, and then I just searched for maze fonts. You'll find them out there, right? We'll see all these awesome maze fonts. And I think I pulled down some of these as well. Here's a cool one, but essentially we're kind of making something like that. Uh, so this is where I ended up. Um, let me see if I could share the font names with you. These are the font names in case you're interested of some of the ones that I got. Like this one's awesome. This is Arbor Tech. Isn't this cool? Arbotech. Sorry about that. Arbotech. Sweet. Right. Can we turn that into a maze? Uh, this is the one that I'm probably going to use, which is Miss Ellen. There we go. Miss Ellen. I mean, this already looks like a maze. This is going to be awesome. Right? So this isometric, ooh, you like this one too. This isometric is awesome. Which one is that? Uh, 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 I think it's this last one. Oh, it's cubicle. I don't know where I got cubicle from. It's called cubicle one brick. Q, B. Look at that. Super hard to read, right? But now you can start to see how you could potentially make a 3D maze with this. Like, how fun would this be? All right, so this is, maybe I'll just. So yeah, we have this, find yourself. Do we somehow hook this together and make a fun maze as well? It's just like so cool uh, what we can do here. How was this done? It was done the same way with the live paint bucket tool. Um, let's sample. Maybe we'll even sample this color. Uh, I think I. Um, Okay, so um, I have already played with the colors. So I was thinking about linking this together. That's all. You know, and we could still use our little running person. It's like find yourself, and this is our 3D maze, and we'd start linking this together. How would we do that? Hmm, you know, by knocking out some of the walls and stuff. So anyways, I like that. I think this one's going to get really complex really fast, and it's no longer going to be legible. Uh, I think we're going to go with something like this, because I think that works out well. There's also this one. Super hard to read, but, you know, could still be a possibility. Uh, let's see what font this is. Ooh, HWT Mardell. So now you know, got all your fonts. And we've done some explorations with them.
And uh, we can go with some of our contenders, which is probably gonna be this one. So this is the one I wanna turn into a maze. Let's copy it. Let's put it on its own layer. Oops. And uh, here this is. It's already lined up and looking good. I love it. We'll go ahead and create outlines for it. Let's make the color a little easier to see. There we go. All right. Bear with me. I just want to see how thick this is, this path. It is about 7.6 wide. So if I want to use a stroke, it's got to be 7.6 wide. So let's do that. Making this black. There we go. Pen tool. Bop. Take that down to... Actually, you know, maybe we will make this one big square. That's what we're going to do. Wait for it. Wait for it, wait for it. Join, back out. We'll fix these lines and then we'll have some fun. But, all righty, wait for it, people. There we go. Bingo. All right. Move it over. Let's get this party started. Find yourself. So we want to make these all different colors. Same process. We're going to use the Live Paint Bucket tool. We want to be able to differentiate sort of one from the other. Uh, let's go into swatches. We'll go with yellow again since we seem to like the yellow. Actually, I'm going to pick these colors again down here into them. So F, I, N, D, we can maybe make these different colors, do we? Maybe. All right. This is getting a little, look at that little weird spot. What is going on there? It's weird that that's, that should be showing up. But all right, so there we have that. Um, and we've used live paint buckets. Hey, let's go back in here, you know me. Pink. I got a color palette that I'm always using. Yeah, exactly, Frank. It's already it's already like a maze, so this was like super easy for me. The font's already done. Most of the work is done. Uh my goal for this now is to still have our same little person. Let's get a little little guy. Uh that maybe starts somewhere and then ends up 
somewhere else. Right here. All right, you ready for this? This is this is going to be fun. We'll just do this just for kicks. Uh, we'll take this. We're going to sample this color. We're going to throw some black right there. Properties for my rectangle. And we're just going to mess with people, but let's just draw this out like so. Put this behind everything like that. <laughs> All right, so here this is. Find yourself. Supposed to look like a maze. Let's do this. You ready? Um, take this part. Uh, object expand everything we're just going to do this we're just going to cheat this because you know what i'm lazy it's fine it's actually not even lazy it's still a good move right because i just want to be able to have this little entrance right here so that's all i'm doing so this is sort of the start of uh, the maze entrance right there. But the thing is, this doesn't go anywhere. What we have going on... Struggle. The struggle is real. Okay, so let me show you something really fast, because I think this is hugely helpful. We'll check time. I still got 15 minutes. This is great. We're going to open up the graphic styles panel. Um, right here, this... Graphic Styles panel um, is, is the default. This first one here is the default. So uh, there we go. It's actually 10, 10, the stroke is 10 point and there's an inside of white. But what we could do is I could say, hey, you know, every time I want to draw, every time I draw, I want it to be this same thickness of this line being 7.6. Well, we can go hold down the option key, drag this on top of this one, and it changes it. Now, anytime I select a different tool, anything else, it's always going to be at that 7.6 size. So I modified it once and it's going to stay that way because it was getting annoying the fact that I always have to change it. So anyways, just showing you that graphic styles, changing that one, we changed the default to our exact thickness. And I don't know, I thought it'd be kind of funny to do something like this. Wait for it. There we go. Okay, we got that. Come over here. And then do this. Or maybe down here. Let's put this person right down here. I don't know. All right. 
So, so that's what I have. I don't know, guys. I'm just playing around now. That's what I have. I don't know. I got to think about it some more. Love the idea. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I just wanted a fake shortcut that went around the frame. I thought that would be fun. So that's what I was going for. You know, the, 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 the thought was like, you're going to try to go through, but really the secret route is going around. So anyways, that's okay. That's why I like digital work. We could always change our mind. Maybe drag this over, make a different version. Uh, take this. There we go. The real way is to just go around. I don't know. Finding yourself, you know, where are you going to be except for right there? Where are you? It's super easy. All right. You guys got it. You guys get the idea. Let's go back in here. We did find yourself. We have obviously like go with the flow and everything. Um, we could maybe deal with different shapes. You ready for this? You ready for this clever Devlin? Ooh, lose your mind. <laughs> Find yourself, lose your mind. Um, I was thinking about like different shapes because what we're dealing with here, actually, let me show you two things. If we wanted to do a, a different type of shape altogether, uh, let's go in here, let's go to the polygon tool. So this polygon tool, we'll just take this, maybe flip it, and uh, turn this into uh, a repeating pattern. So we could use grid, uh, we'll use grid is what we'll use. <laughs> right there. Okay, so now we can kind of sort of crunch these up like so. This actually doesn't, this gets us half the way there, so we'll scrunch that up like that, so those are lined up. We'll scrunch this up so those touch like so. Um, and then we can start to like expand this out any way we want. So we're using a different uh, shape to make our maze. All right, something like this. And still going through that same process that we've been working on. So we'll do something like that. We'll take it, we'll do properties panel. Um, let's actually, this is kind of a cool pattern as well, but we could try different options. This is a cool one, especially if we start to scrunch these together. And now we have like a honeycomb type look. So maybe we do go with this. Um, from there, let's go to, uh, release. Oh no, we don't want to release. We want to just go ahead and expand and release clipping mask. There we are. We've released the clipping mask. Now we have all this, this huge grid that we could start to play with. So, uh, again, I just thought that was kind of cool. Uh, still using the paint bucket tool, jumping in and uh, starting to connect these lines to make just like a different type of maze. Uh, let me make sure all of this is expanded. There we go. Okay, so then again, going back into our... Uh, uh, 
There we go. Like connecting everything, you guys get the idea. So that's another cool way we can make just a cool maze based on any shape that you want. So that's what I would use. Um, let me show you another resource because I think this is absolutely amazing. And this is a treat for everybody who's sticking it out, hanging out with me. Uh, came across this resource, literally mazegenerator.net. Afroja, hopefully you like this. I'll just paste it in there uh, if I can. Boom and boom. Hopefully. Ugh. Get to, ugh. Okay, so here's where you could just jump in and say, hey, you know what? Give me a rectangular. Actually, you could even do a triangular. We were dealing with a hexagon, I think. But let's do a triangular maze. Um, side length, inner length, starts at left side, and then advanced properties as well. And then just click generate. And this makes a triangular maze. Isn't that amazing? Uh, let's go rectangular, and we're gonna crank this up to uh, a thousand by a thousand, generate new. Oh, can I not do a thousand? Uh, one to 200, sorry, 200, 200. Actually, I don't even know if that's gonna be correct. There we go, look at that. Look at this massive maze I just made. This is huge. This is huge. It's actually too big. There we go, we'll download the PDF. By the way, this is just for personal use. If you actually want to use this and like sell it and stuff, yeah, you got to pay the guy because he worked hard on this. Uh, can't emphasize that enough. So again, we're just doing this for fun. We'll take this maze. This happens to all be vector. We'll jump in, we'll open this up. And then there this is. Super cool. Now that we have our nice little maze that we can copy, you know, Here's another one I actually, I ran earlier and pasted in, got a little intense. But you know, do we use this in accordance with, um... actually let's do this. Let's do, it. here's a pro tip. You ready for this everyone? I hope I have time. Oh, I better hurry. Hurry, Paul, hurry. Okay, you ready for this? Oh, gotta do this. Let's take this, let's group it. Oh, what did I just do? Group, there we go. Paint bucket tool, live paint bucket. Selecting our pink, clicking. Oh no, that's not gonna work. Why is that not gonna work? All right, so here's the entrance. What I want to do is I wanted to be able to just fill this with the live paint bucket tool, and it should take me clear down to the exit. Hold on. It's right here. This is the entrance. Oh, I got a minute. I got to hurry. And this is the exit. Right here. Uh, expand everything. Selecting our color clicking at the start of our path. And there might be lots of dead ends, and that's the problem. Oh, there's too many dead ends. That's the problem. Too many dead ends, you get the idea. Appreciate you guys. Here's an another version I made, right? I've made this a bit ago, wish you were here. And, uh, you know, go find yourself, huh? Wherever you may be. You know, hopefully you're not hiding anywhere. But thank you very much for hanging out with me, guys. Appreciate you all. Hopefully you had fun. I think it's fun, uh, you know, building this stuff, turning it into a little, I don't know, color book. This could be a new career for you, a little side hustle, things like that. You get the idea. So hopefully that was fun. Thank you. Oh, Frank, I did see that you did a maze thing. Oh, Frank, check out Frank's 
uh, maze design too. I didn't get into it. Photoshop. That would have been awesome. Um, but yeah, there that is. And appreciate all you guys hanging out with me. And that's all I have for you. So uh, hopefully you're into it. Thanks for joining me. Stick around for Terry White's up next. Actually, no, let me check the schedule really fast. Some pro tips with Annika's up next. I'll Jason action. And uh, it's going to be a good day. So thanks so much for sticking around. And we'll see you all very soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.